let's review QTM TB4 Max docking station. This is a 16-in-1 Thunderbolt 4 docking station that will work great for Macintosh systems and also PCLI. Let's find out. This is Art is Right. QGM has sent me this dock for review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I have reviewed plenty of dock on this channel and some of them are the bus powered variety. They're generally smaller and a little bit more limited in the number of ports that you can use with the dock. In general, those docks are going to be USB 3 or USB 4 technology and they take the power from the USB-C port. The other thing that those docks can do is sometimes they provide power delivery. But in order for you to get that, you would need a power adapter from a laptop, for instance, that has USB Type-C. Plug that power adapter into the dock and then plug the dock into your computer, to which your computer would then get the power from the dock, which is done by the power adapter. So it's kind of a way around getting to all those solutions if you want to have a dock that is bus powered. Now, there are more the premium docks out there, such as this QGM one. And in general, these docks would come with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 technology. They would have more ports and more capability. Each docks are going to be very different. So depending on your workflow, what you're looking for and what you're looking to achieve, I think there are a variety of docks out there that may fit into your needs. So there's no one size fit all when it comes to these kind of docks. For this one, this is a Thunderbolt 4. This is their Max 16-in-1 dock. It comes with a power brick, so this will charge the dock itself or power the dock. And it can also provide 60 watts of power delivery to your laptop and also another 15 watts of power to any of like device that consume less power, for example, a tablet or phone or something like that. So it can be a centralized charging location for your computer as well. Now, as far as using this with, for instance, a 16-inch MacBook Pro, does it work? Yes. 60 watt of power, is that going to be okay? Yeah, it will be fine, but it's not necessarily going to charge your computer really fast. And if you're running computer hard, well, it may just sustain the battery, but it's not going to add the charge to the computer quite as rapid as you may want it to be. In addition to that, this dock also comes with a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is looks like a USB Type-C, and it's around two feet long. Not the longest cable out there. The cable itself is not braided. It is a plastic kind of a cable, the rubberized plastic, as you have seen before and used in other cables, so there's nothing really particularly special there, but it definitely does work. Now, on the dock itself, there are a few things we need to talk about and some behavioral things that are quite different. One thing I want to mention about this is that there is a difference between a Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 technology. For the most part, the bandwidth for Thunderbolt 3 and 4 is still 40 gigabits per second. However, in Thunderbolt 4, the PCIe transfer speed has been bumped from 16 gigabits per second to 32 gigabits per second. So generally, what this is going to translate to is better usage experience for fast storage devices such as an NVMe, which we're going to be testing out on this dock to see if I connect this directly to computer, what speed am I going to get? And if I connect it via this dock, am I going to lose any speed? Or if I'm going to lose some speed, but still is usable. So we're going to figure that out. So let's talk about the dock itself, starting with the construction. Overall, the dock itself is built out of plastic on majority of the side, beside the top, which is made out of aluminum. So you can feel like this is really designed for heat dissipation itself because the dock can run hot at times. So it's a good thing that they have metal enclosure on at least one side of it to dissipate the heat out from the system. There's no fan on the inside, so this dock would run super silent even when it is hot. It will just do a passive heat radiation out from the very top there. A couple of the ports that we need to talk about this dock is that you have the barrel plug. This is where the power adapter will charge in. You have three Thunderbolt ports right there. These are USB Type-C connection and this first one right here, this is where you will plug it into the computer. You have two USB 2.0. These are the Type-A ports so this really helps. You have a gigabit Ethernet connection a full display port, and also an HDMI. I did try to look up the spec for these. I couldn't really find a full spec of it, but when it comes to display, there are a few interesting things about this dock, which is good and also, I would say, 
bad at the same time, but we're going to share that with you later on. On the other side of a dock, what I generally like about this one is that there is a power button, so you can turn the dock on and off. So if you don't want the dock to be on for some reason, you can just press the power button and just turn it off. That's really cool. There's another Thunderbolt port here on this side, two USB 3.0 ports. This is just 3.0 Type A. It's not 3.1, not 3.2. So don't expect to get super high speed from these two docks. You also have an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, and and also two 3.5 millimeter headphone jack type connection. One of them is for headphone, the other one is for microphone. This is something unique that I haven't seen in many of the docks where it has a microphone in as well. So it's good that this one comes with those two. So if you are working in a recording setting and you like to use those kind of microphone or for video conferencing, well, this may be the dock to consider. And as always with a dock like this, the whole goal of getting something like this to set up is so that when you come back from your on location work, for example, you have a laptop like mine, you will simply just plug in one cable and everything is all linked up. Now, for instance, if you're like me and I have a Mac Studio, I tend to use these docks with my Mac Studio as well to expand the port on the Mac Studio. And as I mentioned, depending on the type of port and connection that you want, each dock is gonna be different. There's no one size fit all. So kind of just look at all these and just think about the docks that you wanna get. All right, so now what we're going to do is let's power this dock up and let's run a NVMe test on this dock first to see how it performs. And then we'll jump in and talk about displays, which I think is going to introduce a lot of interesting and compelling reasons why you may or may not want to get this dock. And now that we have the dock plugged in, let's run a speed test on an NVMe SSD. For this, I'll be using a USB 4 NVMe enclosure. And the SSD on the inside is Samsung 970 EVO Plus. This is a two terabyte one. It's not necessarily the fastest NVMe to be putting into an enclosure like this. However, these are components and parts that I already have in my studio, so I am reusing it. If you're looking to build something like this, I will look at other SSDs or other NVMEs on the market that can write and read at a much better speed with this enclosure. But for now, let's run this test. So I'm gonna plug it in directly to the machine. And if you've been watching my video before I have reviewed this enclosure before. In general, the speed we're gonna get is going to be really good and it's going to be much better than the 10 gigabits per second SSD that you can get out there on the market today. So let's start a speed test on this. And when we have directly plugged into the system on this enclosure, we're getting around 1300 megabytes Per second write, we're getting close to 2800 megabytes per second read. These are really great speed that you would get from this NVMe SSD. So now what I'm going to do is stop this and what we're going to do is plug this into our dock and see if there are any speed penalties for if we want to use this Vita dock for instance. So what I'm going to do now is take the USB 4 NVMe enclosure and I'll plug it into the Thunderbolt port on the dock. We're going to wait for a moment. There we go. Now I come on our system, select it, and we're doing a read and write test. So with this, we're seeing about a 400 megabytes per second write speed penalty when we're linking this through the dock. As far as read speed go, we're still getting around 2800 megabytes per second. So there's no penalty on the read speed at all, just only on the write. Now this can really be explained by the Thunderbolt 4 overhead because Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4 still has a lot of overhead when you try to link up to the system. What it really comes down to at the end of the day when you have things linked up like this is for convenience so that you don't have to plug things in and out from your laptop. It's just one single cable or to your computer for that matter. It just makes things easy. So it's one of those balancing acts that you you really need to think about. Now, as far as for daily usage, are you going to see a big difference with that 400 megabytes per second speed penalty? If you're doing any type of photography work, I can tell you right now, you're not gonna run into any of these problems at all. And even for video work at 4K, this won't be an issue. So you're gonna be fine there if you're using this dock and just link a really fast NVMe to this. The only thing that you don't get is the full write speed to which the only time you really are going to benefit from about like, I would say like a third faster write speed than if you would plug into a dock would be if you're copying massive amount of files over to your NVMe. Otherwise on a daily usage, it won't be a problem at all. A few more things about SSD speed. QGM specifications said that we can get up to 3000 megabytes per second when we link up an external SSD to a dock. 
Based on our testing a moment ago, the read speed, we're getting close to that number. However, when it comes to the write speed, we are seeing a penalty. This penalty is really coming from the Thunderbolt overhead, and this is going to happen with any Thunderbolt dock. This is not unique to QGM. Now, the other thing I also want to mention is that, yes, I'm not using the fastest SSD inside my enclosure. However, even if you are using a faster SSD, you won't be achieving those full write speed regardless because you're using a Thunderbolt dock. So that's just something to remember. Now, let's shift gear and talk about display connections. And there's a lot to unpack. At the very fundamental, this dock can support up to an 8K display, and if you want to forego that, you can run up to four 4K displays at 60 Hz. This is all good, but the way how you would achieve that is two of them would be via the Thunderbolt connection, and the other two would be via the display port and also the HDMI. When I was looking for the specification for this dock, I was really trying to find out what the port specification for the HDMI and display ports are. It's not really listed anywhere. So that got me curious. So I'm testing this with my 16 inch MacBook Pro, M1 Max, and this computer can output to four external displays and it can have up to five total displays on the system. All right, with that in mind, let's talk about this and come back to the dock. So I link up external displays via the USB type C Thunderbolt connection using these two docks, no problem whatsoever. However, when I plug in an external display, into the HDMI port on the dock, power on the display, nothing comes on. So in reading more of the documentation for this dock, I found out that the HDMI and the display port is connected to display link. That means you have to download an extra driver and install it on your system, whether your Mac or PC, to get these two ports to work. And that's how you would achieve the four display total. Now, with Display Link, you're not really using the native GPU on your system. It may tap into it, but most of the time it is a software and it's going to use the CPU in the system. And it is a new technology that works fairly well. It is a way how you can expand a computer with limited display output to run more displays. Obviously, there are going to be performance penalty that would come from using the Display Link software. So that's something to think about. And if you have a computer that fully supports multiple display out already, for example, like this M1 Max laptop, well, you may not gain a lot of benefit from installing that extra software and you may not like that. So for me, that's not really quite as useful. However, for someone who may have a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro that can only output to two external displays, well, now you have the opportunity to use this dock and output it to more displays. Now, if you're doing really high graphic intensive application, I would generally tell you to avoid that in general because you're using a software to output a graphic layer on top for multiple display. And that is a lot of data that the software has to push through. And this would also apply to the M1 Apple Silicon as well. For example, this is the M1 MacBook Air that I'll be using to do a demo and this computer this M1 can only output to two display total. So for instance, in the case of the MacBook Air, you can only plug in one external display. In the case of the Mac Mini M1, you can only link up to two external displays, but in total, the system can only handle two displays. What's really neat is this dock expands the capability for these M1 computers, for good or for worse, depending on what you're really doing. So I would take this with a big grain of caution. All right. Let's break down the set and we're gonna link this up to a few displays. I'll link this up to a hardware calibrated display, BenQ SW. I'll also link this up to BenQ Mobius EX3210U. That is a display that can run at 144 Hertz. And I'm gonna link this up with the Mac mini to see what kind of refresh rate are we getting. And the other thing is that if we're using, for example, these display link, can we run a hardware calibration on the system and will that work? So give me just a moment, we're gonna break down the set and we'll be back. For this last test display connection, we're gonna keep things simple. We're going to use two external display only and let's start out with the setup. I have my MacBook Air M1. This is pretty much the base MacBook Air. And when it comes to M1 silicon, you can only output to two display total. If you have a portable device or for example, an iMac for that matter, you would have the built-in display and one external. In the case of the Mac Mini M1, you can link up to two external display and that's pretty much it. Now this is also regardless of if I have the internal display on or off. For example, I can run this in clamshell mode and I can still only link up one external display natively to the system. This dock 
right now is link up to my MacBook Air via the Thunderbolt 4 cable and it's extending the capability of this computer to have two external display output and can run up to three total. So we're gonna go over that. This is BenQ SW271C. This is their 27 inch hardware calibrated display for photographers and this display is linked up to the dock via a USB type C using the Thunderbolt port on it. So in connection parlance, this is pretty much running the native signal that's coming from the laptop. This is using GPU acceleration and everything and hardware calibration will work by this dock as long as it is natively connected without any problem. This is BenQ Mobius EX 3210U. This is their high refresh rate entertainment display or gaming display and this display is 4K, it technically can refresh at up to 144 hertz and on a Macintosh system, provided that you're running this natively using the correct cable, you can also do variable refresh rate. And in testing this display in general, I can tell you that the only connection that you can use running with a Mac on this display to get 144 hertz is DisplayPort connection. With anything else, you're not really going to get, for example, HDMI, you're not going to get the 144 hertz. But this dock using display link does something quite interesting. So as I mentioned before, the full display port and also the HDMI on this dock uses display link connection. With display link on this EX3210U, let's take a look at the display setting. So right now, this display is linked up via the dock using an HDMI cable. And with this, I can run the display at 120 Hertz. So this is a way to get around Mac limitation on HDMI using display link, but still I'm not getting the full 144 Hertz. So that's just something to think about. It does offer some opportunity for HDMI that otherwise you would not get on a Mac, but with regards to HDMI or DisplayPort, and I ran tests on this, you can only go up to as high as 120 hertz and you cannot exceed that. So you're not really using this display at its full refresh potential. Now, speaking of this, one more thing I want to mention about the M1 computer in general is that in total with this dock, even though it can support up to four 4K display at 60 hertz, when you're using an M1, you can really only do up to three displays. And that is because this computer will only support one native output that is native to the system, meaning that you can only do one USB-C or Thunderbolt type connection out because what I have done is link up another display to this setup using a Thunderbolt porch on here and it doesn't work. So you can do three external displays, but two of them has to be done via display link. Now, if you have an M1 Pro or above, M1 Pro can output natively to two external displays. And when you're using that via the two Thunderbolt connection, along with the DisplayPort and HDMI display link, you can get up to four display total. So this will also help extend the capability of the M1 Max and also the M1 Ultra. So technically the M1 Max can output to five displays very similar to the M1 Ultra and you can do pretty much the same thing, which is cool, but you can add two more displays to your setup if you really need that much by using this dock and display link. So overall, what do I think about this dock? I think that if you have, for example, a machine that's an M1, and you want to extend more display capabilities, that is something that you may want to consider. Just note, as I mentioned before, that this is not running natively on Apple Silicon GPU or anything like that. It's done via software that's outputting a lot of data to the display. So when you're really trying to do a lot of heavy intensive work, well, it may get affected by the performance and all these other things. So far, people have been using this, they have no issue, but that's something that I would caution you. As I mentioned with hardware calibrated display, if you have the M1, you can only really link one up to the system because if you try to use a hardware calibrated display using display link, it just doesn't work. You can do a software calibration on it, but you can't do hardware calibration. So like I said, every single dock that I have been reviewing on my channel are really unique in one way or the other. And this is unique in a way that it expands the capability of the M1 computer. And also your PC, if you don't have that many connection, this is a really great way to just expand it to multiple displays. As far as other connectivity, I mean, ultimately it really comes down to what you are looking for to get in your workflow. Do you want to expand more USB-A ports or do you really want to have more USB-C ports or do you want to have USB 
1, 3.2, Gen 2 for, for that matter. It depends on the port that you want in a dock. So I would look at the dock and look at what your needs are to find a dock that best fits your need. So far in testing this is really cool. Now, the other thing I want to mention about this dock is that I have been running this for a while during the test and it does get fairly hot on the very top part. On the side, because it is plastic, I mean, there's not much heat from there, but on the very top, you can definitely feel that. Anyway, if you have any specific questions about this dock, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new, and in Art Retrust.